Let's get in the Word this morning. How many have been reading with us in James? Yes. Yep. Amen. Yeah, yeah, following along. That's our scripture challenge for this year, doing something you, we've never done before. We're reading a book of the Bible together. And uh, last week, was uh, we talked about chapter 2 out of chapter 2. Each week, we're looking to the Lord to give us utterance and unction what His Word is for us through the portion we're reading that week. This current week, we finished up. We read James 3 and 4. This coming week, we'll be reading James chapter 5 together. So be sure and do that and read it out of different translations. If you want to download, if you have a smartphone, you can download the Version Bible on there. They've got all kinds of different translations that you read and uh, you'll benefit from that. You know, translation is such that, you know, it takes some effort to be a translator and to bring one language and the meaning and the figures of speech and all that over into our language where we can understand. So it's helpful to look at some different things. In James chapter 3, we're going to start there today. Hallelujah. How many would pray with me and believe? How many of just let me ask you a question. How many believe that God would actually speak through me to your heart? You know, if he doesn't, why are we here? (laughs) So trust God with me right now for utterance. It's his will. Let's get it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence here and for your anointing and for your utterance by your spirit to bring your word home to all of us. In Jesus' name we receive it. Amen. Amen. James chapter 3, verse 13 through 18, questions our concept of who is wise and understanding. And James quickly answers it and says that the truly wise The truly understanding person is one whose faith in God leads to selfless good works. Wise people live in the humility that wisdom prompts. And they set setting themselves aside to do good to serve others. Now, that's not worldly wisdom. I tell you what, let's read James 3, verse 13 through 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Another translation said, in the meekness which wisdom prompts. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic, For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. That's not worldly wisdom. Okay, worldly wisdom leaves each person to serve himself or herself. Earthly attitudes are driven by envy for what others have and an ambition to take it for themselves. And the result is disorder and evil. And instead of the peace and the gentleness and the mercy... And the good fruit that walking in God's wisdom will bring. Let's talk about what wisdom is for just a minute. Wisdom, uh, the Greek word translated wisdom is the word Sophia. And it literally means insight, skill, whether human or divine, and intelligence. For instance, in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 4, it says that these things are written to give insight to the simple. Knowledge and discernment to the young. And so that's what wisdom is. Wisdom is us being able to see how things really work and how to live in the midst of where we're at. Uh, Someone has said that wisdom is knowledge rightly applied. Now, 
the root of the word wisdom is clear or clarity. And wisdom enables us to see, to see things clearly, to have clarity in our lives. From this word, Sophia, we get a couple words. We get the word sophistication, which is actually literally the art of using wisdom. If you think of sophistication, it's not as, don't think of sophistication this morning as something complex and hard to understand. Think of sophistication in contrast to being simple and ignorant and not knowing what's going on. When we have a bit of sophistication, godly sophistication about us, we're able to live with wisdom in the world in which we live. Also, our word philosophy. Philosophy literally means an affection for wisdom. And so here in this scripture that we're looking at, James contrasts two sets of wisdom. Two sets of thinking, two worldviews, two perspectives of the world and how it works and how I should make my decisions, how, how I should guide my life. What's the right thing to do in this setting? James says, God says through James, there's two very distinct, contrasting and opposing wisdoms. There's the world's wisdom and there's God's wisdom. Now, My former pastor's wife we was at a, a meeting one night with Pastor Joy and I. This was years ago. And we were talking about the families in which we grew up. And she did not grow up as a believer. None of her family were believers. And she was telling about, and this may date me a little bit. Help me out here, guys. How many of you remember the days when we cut pieces of carpet and put them as liners in the back windows of our cars. All right, come on, get them up there. I'm not that old. Yep, yep, shag, all that stuff. You bet. Well, styles change, don't they? Well, anyway, they were sitting around. Our pastor's wife and her family, when she was a girl, were sitting around. And her brother began to share with the family how he'd really put one over on the carpet store owner the other the day. How he went into the carpet store, he found the carpet that he wanted for the back window of his car, but he couldn't find it in the remnant bin. So while the owner went out of the room, back to the front to take care of somebody else, he found the roll that he wanted the piece off of, and he cut it off himself and took it up to the counter and presented it to the owner as a remnant, and so got remnant price for it, and, she, and the reaction, he was commended, he was celebrated, he was attaboyed for being so shrewd. How many of you know that's not God's wisdom? That's worldly wisdom. Okay, we're contrasting worldly wisdom and God's wisdom. That's worldly wisdom. See, the word, wisdom of the world is not pretty. Okay, it's driven by envy and selfish ambition, and the result is all the disorder and evil that we see in the world. Putting ourselves ahead of all others means making excuses for hurting other people in order to get what we want. Putting, other, putting ourselves in front of everybody else, walking in the world's wisdom, brings into our lives millions of contradictory goals. I have to remember what lie I told this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. The story I told them, the, the, the scam, the, the thing that I'm working on these other people. It brings, and James told us right here, God told us right here, that where that is, there's every sort of evil. Amen. So this morning, I'm simply going to ask you, what is the wisdom in which you walk? I just want you to think about that this morning. What is the wisdom in which you walk, that you've embraced, that you've swallowed, that you've absorbed? 
Because we all come into life with a blank slate. We, we come into life with a soul that's open to input. We come into life with a capacity, a capability to, to download understanding and insight and wisdom. And so all along the way, we're, we are embracing things. We're swallowing things. We're absorbing things. It's like we're like computers, either a new computer or an old computer that's been scrubbed. Maybe even taken back to the factory settings where the operating system is there and it's ready to operate whatever programs get downloaded on the computer. That's what we're like. So each of us is living our life with a set of thoughts, our wisdom. How we're seeing things. What is a shrewd way to get through life? So what is the wisdom that you're living by today? There's two sets. There's the world's wisdom and the things it brings. And there's God's wisdom and the things that it brings. Can I get an amen? So what do you think? What do you think? You know, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 is a verse that is quoted quite a bit, at least the last part of it. It says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what do you think? What do you think? Years ago, I was a traveling minister. I was part of a ministry of missionary work in the Philippines. And I would travel from church to church and present our ministry in an effort to gain a network of supporters I found out over the years that God has a group of people out there to, that will connect. That, 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 yes, I want to accomplish that work in that land. Others, not so much. And so I was in a particular church, and the pastor of that church took me out to lunch. Now, I had a sense, now you have to understand, I was like 25 years old, three little kids at home. I've been working a job where my two-week paycheck didn't even cover our rent. I was working side jobs. We were, I was doing everything I could to provide for my family. Every dime I got had to go home to pay for bills that were already due, which meant I, I was a lot slimmer. My role in the ministry had not expanded like it has today. <laughs> So I was out to eat with this pastor, and it was a nice place. But I just got a check on the inside not to eat very much. Well, as the conversation went on, he, you could say, revealed to me, shared with me, kind of mentored me in how he was sharing that and I don't even know how it came up in the conversation, really. But he was kind of mentoring me that when he had an employee, when he was interviewing a possible employee for his staff, he would take them out to eat. Because he had found over the years that when someone is sitting there eating, they will share things more openly and personally than they will if they're just sitting in an office. He was manipulating them. He was working them. He was playing them. Now, you may not feel that way, but that's the way I felt. I realized that the Holy Spirit, and I'm so thankful the Holy Spirit protected me from opening up to someone whose heart was not with me. He was playing me but God had protected me in that setting. Isn't God good? Now let me ask you, what sort of wisdom was that? What sort of wisdom was that on his end? Well, you're quiet this morning. 
I'm not going to answer it for you. You get to answer that one yourself. It's worldly wisdom. Yeah, but he's a pastor, pastor. Yeah, he's a pastor. But you need to understand that underneath these pastor suits is a person just like you. Who has to make choices. It was wisdom to him to manipulate. It was wisdom to him to play upon the vulnerabilities and weaknesses of potential employees. He was working me. He was playing me. He was manipulating me. Boy, it's sure quiet in here. Look at me at James chapter 3. Verse 17, I'm going to re- we're going to read out the Amplified Classic version here. Because my question to you today is, which wisdom will be yours? Because all along the way, we have choices. Am I right or am I right or am I right? <laughs> yeah, we have choices every moment of every day. We're making choices about how we're going to do. And those choices bring fruit in our life. The world's wisdom brings envy, it brings hurts, it brings fears, it brings divisions and strife and ruined relationships, unfulfilled potential. But walking in godly wisdom brings a whole different set of wonderful things. Verse 17, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure. And I'm just going to comment a little bit as we go through these. First of all, pure or undefiled. This word pure comes from the word, same word as holy. Holy. It describes a person who's clean and modest and morally faultless. This is a wisdom that's not tainted. It's not compromised with personal agendas or selfish ambitions. It's pure. This kind of wisdom is refined and is focused on exactly one thing. And that thing is whatever God's called us to. It's pure. It's wholehearted. Secondly, the wisdom from above is first of all pure. Then it is peace-loving. In other words, it puts a high value on easing conflict. All right, I'm going to step into it with both feet right now. We're coming in, we are in election season. And I can tell you as a leader that whatever's at the top flows down through the rest. Then when we've had noble and honorable leaders... It's been so easy to become a noble and honorable leader myself. It just lifts the lid and establishes a flow. The anointing flows from the top. And I want you to, and, and, and I want you to understand that should the wrong person or should, let me just say it this way. I don't want to say wrong person. I want you to see the white of my eyes when I say this. If someone gets elected into office that's not walking in this kind of wisdom, whose character and behaviors you see don't align with this kind of wisdom, as a believer, you're going to have to intentionally make an effort to not be molded into that image. Okay, that's enough said about that. This kind of wisdom, it's, it's, it's pure It's peace-loving. It's courteous. It's considerate and gentle. In Galatians, it says, let your gentleness be known to all men. And I like it out of Galatians because Galatians is the charter of Christian freedom. Maybe someday, some month this year, we'll actually read through Galatians together. But it's a book about living in the grace of God and the obedience of faith rather than flesh effort under a law. And in Galatians it says, let your gentleness be known to all men. And this is the same word as this. Listen to me. This gentleness is the sweet reasonableness 
that looks humanely at the facts of every case, not insisting on the letter of the law. The wisdom from above looks humanely at the facts of every case, not insisting on the letter of the law. It's the opposite of harsh, abrasive, sarcastic, cruel, and contentious. It's not ready to fight, but it's ready to serve. Let me ask you again, which wisdom will be yours? It is willing to yield to reason, we go on to read. It's reasonable. In other words, it's ready to see things from another point of view and do it someone else's way. Can you see how that contrasts with the world's wisdom? The world says, my way or the highway. And if you don't agree with me, I'm going to do a workaround. I'm going to do something. I'm going to get around you, or I'm going to move you. I'm going to trick you. I'm going to do something, because I'm going to get my way. And if I can get you to do it my way, and give me my way, then I'm going to do it. And that's wisdom, like that boy in the carpet store. But the wisdom from above, the insight, the clarity, the intelligence that comes down to us from God is not that way. It's willing to yield. It's willing to listen to somebody else. It's willing to do it somebody else's way. It's full of compassion and good fruits. That's what the scripture goes on to tell us. It's full of compassion and good fruits. In other words, all the things that flow flow from living this way. The wisdom from God is, it's not cold and hard and unfeeling. It's compassionate toward other people. And it's full of all the good things that come by living with it. Which wisdom will be yours? It's wholehearted and straightforward and impartial. In other words, it doesn't show any of the favoritism that James addressed in chapter 2. It's impartial. And it's unfeigned. Free from doubts, wavering, and insincerity. What's that mean? It means it's sincere. It has no need to fake anything to get what it wants out of other people. There's a quote from a a website named Bible Ref, which was, frankly, a very good help to me. I found out in the last few weeks that God answers questions when you ask him. Anybody ever read a Bible verse again and again and just, yeah, I know those are the English words, but I don't know what that means. I know what the words mean, but I don't know what that means. And I found out that if I sincerely ask God, what's that mean? Within just a moment, he's explaining it to me. Man, let's not just live without what we need. (laughs) Man, listen to this from Bible Ref. It's amazing how much easier and more pleasant life becomes when a Christian gives up the requirement of getting what he or she wants at all costs. Do I need to read that again? I think I will. It's amazing how much easier and more pleasant life becomes. Can you all say easier and more pleasant? Man, you want to go through that door? It's amazing how much easier and more pleasant life becomes when a Christian gives up the requirement of getting what he or she wants at all costs. Without that agenda, there's less and less need for conflict. James 3.18. Let's read on the next verse. And the harvest of righteousness... A conformity to God's will in thought and deed is the fruit of the seed sown in peace by those who work for and make peace in themselves and in others. That peace, which means concord, agreement, and harmony. This is the Amplified Bible. (laughs) Which means concord. That peace, which means concord. Okay, let's go back to the start of the verse. And the harvest of righteousness, of conformity to God's will and thought and deed, is the fruit of the seed sown in peace by those who work for and make peace in themselves and in others. 
That peace, which means concord, agreement, and harmony between individuals, with undisturbedness, in a peaceful mind free from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts. Oh, what peace we can have. I'm just asking you this morning, what wisdom will be yours? Because what wisdom you walk in provides the life that you live in. Prepares the atmosphere around you and for your neighbors and your children and your parents and your friends and your spouses and your boyfriends and girlfriends and the guy at the lube shop and the girl behind the register. See, this godly wisdom, the wisdom from heaven, this is the wisdom of those that trust God to provide all their needs. Who continue. It's the wisdom of those who trust God to continue to give them that every good and perfect gift that comes down from above that we read about in James 1. This is the wisdom of those who trust God to fulfill every desire of their hearts, both in this life and in the world to come. And as a result, these believers willingly sacrifice opportunities for more and more money and pleasure and power and make themselves available to serve the needs of others. Don't you want to live like that? Aren't you glad you can live like that? I asked Brittany to come to the platform and just pay the, play the keys and I just want to take some time right now and give you some time to think about this and do some business with God. He's such a wonderful counselor. And right now we're in his presence. You're in his presence. And perhaps if I, as I've been sharing this morning, you want to take another swallow of heavenly wisdom. <laughs> You want to make a change in your heart. You want to ask God for help with something in your life. God, help us. Help me to make that, help me lay that aside. Help me to make that change. You pray your own prayer right there. I choose heavenly wisdom, Father. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you for coaching us. Father, I repent. I turn from that. Thank you for helping me. I open my heart. And I receive that thing you're speaking to me about. I choose that change, Lord. I choose that change. I make it right now. Trust in you to help me stay with it and to understand and walk it out. And guys, all those things that you don't understand about how it's going to work and how it's going to affect your relationships, he'll be there for you in that too every step of the way. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us today. For God so loved the world, the Bible says, that he gave his only son so that whoever believes on him won't perish but will have everlasting life. That's all it takes. Jesus did all the heavy lifting. He died for our sins, our 
Sins is a missing of the mark. We all make bad choices. We do things we shouldn't or don't do things we know we should. Either way, the Bible calls it a sin. But we're not, God's way of making us right with himself is not for us to try to make up for it, but to recognize that Jesus did everything necessary to take care of it and simply to ask us to believe on him and receive what he did. Oh, thank God to throw ourselves on his mercy. He died for our sins. And after three days was raised from the dead, just like the scripture says. And whoever, he's alive, he's Lord. And whoever calls on his name will be saved. So if you're in this room today, you can do that. If you've never accepted Jesus, never given him your life, made him Lord of your life, you can do that right now. We're going to pray a prayer together. And right there where you're seated, you can pray this prayer with us. Very simple. Very simple. Just acknowledging what we just talked about and giving him your life, making him Lord, receiving what he's done. That's it. He'll get involved with you and take it from there. You'll, you'll, he'll guide you. He'll help you. But it starts with that real decision of giving your life to him, receiving him as your Lord. You're not even going to understand all that. It'll take you years to learn all the ramifications of that. But second step only can come if you take a first step, and that's to accept Jesus. So if you're here today, you say, Pastor, I believe what you've been saying about Jesus, and I want to pray this prayer with you and receive him as Lord. If you would do this for me, guys that they're going to pray. I would really like to know I'm praying for you. So if you'd, if you'd be saying, Pastor Lauren, you're praying with me. I'm receiving Jesus. On the count of three, would you lift your hand real boldly so I know I'm praying with you? Here we go. One, two, three. Go ahead and lift your hand all over the room. Online, you pray with us too. I know God's dealing with believers in this place, but at the same time, I don't want to overlook an opportunity to lead somebody to Jesus. So let's all pray this together. Say it with me. Dear God in heaven, thank you for what you did for me in sending your son Jesus. I turn from how I've been living, and I trust you, Lord. Be the leader of my life from this day forward. In your name I pray, amen. Let's all say it together, Jesus is Lord.